Hey Titan Games, hey Royal Nomi, how's it going? Can you hear me okay? Doing good, doing good. Um, I've had to revert and change some of my setup. I'm using a kind of a mixed setup right now. I was trying to switch from OBS and StreamerBot over to OBS and uh, was it on Pro 3D? And yeah, I, I was having issues with the uh, OnPro 3D. It just would not um, let me use the mic for whatever reason. One of the uh, sound alerts kept grabbing the mic and wouldn't free the mic. So, yep. And how's everybody doing? I was kind of waiting for the countdown to, to finish, but we'll go ahead and, and start the stream now. How's it going, Titan Games? Sorry, I was a couple of minutes late getting on. I had a uh, meeting that ran a bit late. Um, as you can see, the um, the screen's a little bit uh, changed. So uh, I got in a new camera in the last couple of days. Yep, there I am. How's it going? What is it? Oh, hey, hi. Um, so I got in a new camera yesterday. Um, I'm now, my primary camera is a Logitech Brio 4K, uh, which allowed me to move the uh, Logitech 922 over here, which should hopefully, um, there we go, autofocus a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be working, uh, trying to get some better shots in with the two, between the two cameras, um, but yeah, um, as far as streaming goes, last week um, we left off. Um, we had just gotten the X, uh, excuse me, the Z rails installed and the Y rail installed. Um, we only have one of the belt clips in for the moment. Um, we're going to be running the belt in a few minutes, so we'll take that out and run the belt. Um, we temporarily put in the tensioner screw at the beginning and mounted the front Y bracket. We may take that off just to make it a little bit easier to run the belts. Um, yep, not late, just on time. What is that? It's a, a good wizard is never late. They arrive just on time. Um, and I think I have decided I'm going to go ahead and swap out the, uh, the standard Creality Z motor that has the pressed on pulley um, with the other motor I have, uh, which one is a little bit bigger, and then two will allow me to run uh, a standard tooth pulley. And that way, um, It'll just make it a little bit easier to line up the belts and I won't have any issues with the belts. Um, so while we're here, let me go ahead and get that started here. And I, I do want to let you know, I do have, I believe, a three second delay going. Um, I was hoping that by adding a little bit of a delay um, it would mitigate whatever uh, issue I was having streaming last week, or excuse me, on Saturday, that was causing the stream to drop and break up. So. Well, that's interesting. Check that package real fast. Whew. Looks like it only gave me one set screw, so I will have to go with that for the time being, and then I'll add another one and adjust it down the road. 
So how's how's everything going tonight? Whoop. Actually, it looked like the other one was actually in it, so that's even better. How's everybody's day going? So in the background, um, I am printing. Let me grab a couple of the pieces real fast. Sorry for walking off camera. So I have started to print out some Gridfinity uh, squares. Um, I got some basic squares and the two by ones. And then I started, um, this is a base, and this is in a Polymaker Blue. Can't complain that much. Yeah, um, so the other piece that's currently printing, uh, let me turn you around on this camera just a bit. See if we can't get you over here. Um, printing right now on the Prusa Mini is going to be the top riser piece on this. And that will work um, for my new Fabrico uh, drivers. So I went ahead and got some new drivers to help. Um, these are not ball in drivers, they're um, squ standard square tips. So these should help um, without, you know, keep me from rounding off screws, especially the, uh, the set screws. So I did get a new set, so I'm printing out that, um, that, that allow me to set that up here on the bench instead of keep knocking the one off over here and I'll relocate this one over as a maintenance set for the other printers. The the quality, are you talking about the Fabrico drivers here? Um, I just got them in and I haven't used them yet um, but I can tell you um, this is metal knurled grips um, and they do have set screws here so if you ever do break one of the bit or the drivers themselves you can pull them out and uh, you can get replacements through Fabrico and also if you need it to be shorter or longer you can pull the set screws out um, because the handle is um, uh, hollow so you can pull these in and out. So right now, feeling like it feels really good. Um, and, and I like that metal knurling a little bit better than the, uh, than the rubber bond haws, because you can tell on this, this is a two and a half millimeter driver that's used for all your three millimeter socket head screws. I have completely worked off the, uh, the uh, silk screening completely off of this one from using it so much. So I'm hoping that they'll be um, a little better quality in the long run. And that was actually the two millimeter one. So speaking of which, I'll probably grab and use that one as I'm doing these set screws. Um, I just got the standard set, which comes with a uh, 2mm, 2.5, 3, 4, and 5. Um, I didn't get the two smaller sizes because they didn't have them in stock when I bought them. Yeah, um, I've seen them used by several streamers, and I've been looking for a nice set. Um, that was a little, uh, a little better, a little more rigid. Um, I'm afraid with the ball end drivers, I have stripped a couple of screws out, especially small set screws. Um, so I was just really looking to to get a little bit better quality, especially on the set screw, you know, for the set screws.
yeah, the adjustable length would be nice. There we go. And so I'm not, I, I just snug these up. I didn't really crank down on them. I'll adjust that once I get the belt run. Um, but once again, we're going to pull the standard uh, Y motor off and we'll go with this other one. This is a, so the standard Y motor was the 4234 and I'm going to put in a 4240, uh, which is a, NEMA, a standard NEMA 17, but a size 40 inch or 40, 40 uh, millimeter depth body. So it's just, it'll have a little more torque in it. Yeah, I actually have um, the, the, the set screws that I, that I rounded out happen to be on a one of the Creality um, extruder motors that actually had uh, set screws on it versus a press gear. So yeah, those are those are always fun when you strip, strip those out. All right, I gotta get my head in there for a second. Okay, so this is what I was getting at, is this is a pressed on gear, it's really not easy to adjust. <coughs> Excuse me, and on the, um, on the red one back here, when I did it, I did use this motor, but the belt rides right up against the, the edge of the flange, and I'd much rather have it centered and have a little bit of play. Um, so that's why I'm going to swap that one out, and I'll just keep that one on the bench. Um, I do have a gear puller. Um, it's an actual metal gear puller, so that will help. I, I've seen some people that just heat it up a little bit with a heat gun and then use that uh, metal gear puller that was made for uh, RC uh, cars and stuff. And you can pop those pulleys off and then reuse the motor. And once again, on these motors, um, you want the um, the actual um, cable jack to be pointing towards the front of the machine. There will be a cutout um, in the deck bracket or the deck uh, panel about right here that the cable will go down through, as well as the Y end stop will go down through that hole. So. And we will be putting the deck panel on in a little bit today. Um, I did cut those deck panels myself on the Shapeoko 3XL CNC machine last night. So I do have some deck panels cut for these. So I'm feeling like that is not lining up. There it is. So Titan, do you do uh, any real 3D printing? Uh, do you do 3D printing on your channel, or you know, what kind of content do you have on your channel? Try and get this a little bit closer, and make it easier when we start running the belts.
no channel, you just lurk while you're working. Well, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I tend to get on some channels and lurk as well, just to have something playing in the background. Uh, it's almost like my white noise. So we got that. What I'm going to do is um, I am going to go ahead and take off the front here. Matchsticks on your V0 last night. Uh, so what's that? What what do you mean by matchsticks? Oh, the LEDs. Gotcha. LED strips. Okay. And Royal Nomi, what is, uh, how's BC doing? Did he get his homework done last night? Okay, I got you now. And we did get a fresh set of belt in. Uh, I did get some parts in last yesterday, which is great. So I got some new belts, and I got the key back that we'll need. Um, so on a Core X Z, which is what this system will be, um, we'll use the key back as a counterweight for the gantry to keep that gantry from from falling down. Hey, Chewy, how's it going? How is it going? You haven't missed much. I was a few minutes late getting started today. I had a, a meeting at work that got called, or I shouldn't say got called, but uh, it started kind of late for me. So I had to do the whole work thing and, and wait a couple of minutes. How'd you bork a fan? Yeah, sorry about that. I, I, um, I, I'm running kind of a weird mix setup. Like I've, um, I was running OBS and StreamerBot for the first couple of streams, and I tried setting up uh, Own3D Pro, and for whatever reason, running all of the, the um, alerts in their, in their base template setup that I was using, um, it actually, like, like the alert itself, took over the microphone. So right now I've added a couple of things into my old streamer bot setup. Um, but yeah, I don't know why that got auto-modded. And yes, I, I have, a, I believe I set a three-second delay. Um, just because um, last week we had some, some issues with the stream stopping and so I figured if I set up a little bit of a delay that would help um, with whatever network issue I had that day. Hey Subsector, how's it going? Uh, so we actually started a 
a couple of minutes late. You haven't missed much. I just kind of reviewed what we were doing. Um, somebody asked what I was in the process of printing. And I will show you that in a second. All I've done is um, we swap. We did swap the uh, the Y motor here, and we went from the standard Creality Y motor, which has a um, a pressed-on pulley that's not adjustable, to uh, a different driver. Uh, it's still a Creality. It's, it's just a little bit bigger, so it'll have a little bit more torque and a standard GT2 pulley that'll allow me to, to move it to line up the pulley. And now I'm just trying to route my belt, which goes down through the middle of the extrusion. And it's a little bit easier to use gravity here. Just make sure you have in your carriage stops so you don't uh, lose a carriage off of a linear rail. What am I catching on? It's catching on something right in the middle, and that's the, the thing I hate with this. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Maybe I get another Bermuda nose. If not, I've got a set of forceps down there I can, I can get it with. Um, Yep, we have to find the forceps. If, if you don't have a set of these, get them. Um, they're relatively cheap, but they're uh, basically like forceps. And they, they click so that you can get into tight places like down the shaft of a, an extrusion to get the belt that's halfway down in there, if I can get to it. Still having a problem getting to it. Um. Yeah, if you can get hold of a, of a moon stepper, they're pretty good. Um, LDOs are, are awesome as well. There we go. Make sure we come around the pulley. And give me one second and double check. No. Yep. Um, so when we go to do this, the belt goes under and then up, and we'll be able to leave some extra tucked in, and so that will allow us to do some adjustments later if we need to. And we come in from the back side. So how are you doing today, subsector? You working on anything, or are you still at work? Yeah, an old antenna with a magnet. Oh, I'll tell you. Um, What's kind of interesting is I had an electrician come and do some work on the house and he left a, um, had all the printers running. 
Okay, well that's good. Yeah, I believe it's it's picking up the Prusa Mini running in the background. Um, I am printing out some Gridfinity parts because um, I'm going to use some of these to hold the parts for builds that I plan on using that day to help organize the the build setup. So that way I don't have to keep digging around looking for a screw here or there. Pull that up and put this back in there. Um, so yeah, I've got a, um, uh, a new set of Fabrico um, branded um, hex nut drivers and they're nice because they're not ball ends. Come on. Oh, it's not going to autofocus for me. But they're, they've got a nice metal knurled grip. So they should be really good to grab hold of and uh, work with in tight places. Let's see how much of this we have to play with. Which, which snakes are those again that you're printing, subsector? I can't remember who the uh, artist is on those, but those are really cool little snakes. Um, yeah, that I can't, I'm not sure if that's a Creality branded Moonstepper or not, Chewy. Um, I did buy it through the Creality Amazon store, um, just to have a spare. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's actually been a pretty good, uh, spirit to have on hand too. <clears throat> Oops. And so this is where I wanted to pull this end out so I can route the belt easier around it. Um, I hate trying to have to route belts in tight places. So get the belt routed around there. And then we will go ahead the the we when we did this last week um, <clears throat> we used a 40 millimeter screw just as a placeholder because I knew I was going to take it back off and it, it um, calls for a 12 millimeter screw so we will go ahead and grab one of those Bad snakes. Oh, the Capricorn Bright Rainbow. Okay. Yeah, the Capricorn Bright Rainbow is a pretty color. Um, I also like the uh, Yusu filaments. They're dual and tri colors. Um, you uh, showed on stream initially. Biting again. Oh, no, that's not biting because there's no screw there for it to bite. So, dang it. I didn't notice that this, the, uh, oh. the screw or the nut could pop out, so i got to get that back in there. See if I can get that seated down in there without having to take the bearing stack back out. Might be one of those 
those spots where it's better to open it back up and put in a uh, lock nut versus a regular nut. And the macaroon rainbow looks good. Okay. Sorry about this folks, I know this is kind of hard to get on the camera, but I'm trying to get that nut threaded in there. understand why I'm not getting it to bite. might be the issue is it called for a 12 and I'm pretty sure it's going to need something bigger so that's actually the issue is I'm just using the I'm sure it's too short so be on the safe side we'll go ahead and grab a 20 um, and run it in there and if we need to swap it out for a smaller one down the way, we will. And speaking of which, we will. Um, that's a little bit too much, so we're probably going to go for a 16, which I do have back over here. So, how to actually, yeah, um, because that's the thing is the the designer on this um, had several um, screw sizes that weren't correct. Um, they, they looked great on CAD, but it didn't account for any um, variance in printing and stuff. And so you really had to start putting it together and then go, okay, well, this should be this versus that. There we go. We got it biting now. And then... Um, like I said, I watched Steve Builds on YouTube um, go through and do this build. And it 
here we go. There we go. Um, and and he found several of them where the the uh, sizes were wrong and needed to be updated. So what is it you're trying to break into now, Chewy? Just going to set this up on its tail end to make it easier to get these screws started again. These are M5 by 10 button head screws. Funny how the screws go in easier when you use the right size driver. <laughs> okay, we'll see you in a little bit, subsector. So we got the belt on there. It is lined up in our thing or in our pulley. We're just going to route the belt up and through. I did do this one a little bit longer. I probably will pull a little bit extra in here and flap it over when I put the bed on just to give me the ability to one, tension it over time. And then two, if I come in to do any maintenance on it, you know, if you cut them too short, you wind up just throwing belt away or pulling it and using it on a different printer down the road. So I like to leave them a little bit long if I can. Back to our 2 out of 5 and So do you have anything going on the printer right now, Chewy, or, or are you just uh, trying to play remote admin? Hey, Stephen Poole, how's it going? For those of you that don't know, Stephen Poole won a uh, an, an LDO Orbiter V2 with filament sensor off of DB Dam's Christmas stream. And yeah. We are doing good. He said, we're just over here doing a, a bill. And these were in 3x12s. Hey, West Rewind, how are you doing? How are the duckies and chicks doing today? I didn't have a chance to log on and, and check on the stream today. I've had way too many meetings at work.
Oh, okay. All the cool kids are here. I'm going to pull this. I'm not going to like really pull it tight, but I do want to get it just a little bit tight. I should say snug. And then we'll latch it down with the belt clamp. And We are, let's see if we can get a decent camera view here. We are pretty lined up on that pulley as it stands. Everything's moving pretty, pretty decently, so I'm going to go ahead and snip this down some. And once again, these will be able to fold over and just sit down in the recess there um, and give you some extra to work on or work with when you're doing maintenance. So Westry, um, I know you say you don't like to tinker, but things like this and watching builds and understanding the build process would actually help out a lot with your maintenance because at some point, you know, your wheels go bad, so you're going to have to take your bed off and, and replace wheels and stuff like that. So this is definitely a, a good thing to learn and be aware of as well. So the Tronxy um, X5SA, is that basically a Tronxy clone of the Creality Ender 5? Yeah, watch and learn. Hey, that, I'll tell you. That's how I learned. You know, I started off with a TiVo Tarantula back in 2017. And really it was follow the manual, put it together. Okay, it works. It printed me. Um, but today I get an uh, Ender 3 out my, and I assemble it. And it prints like three times better than the Tarantula did off of its first print uh, with no real problems. So... Okay, so it is Core XY already. Okay, that's the one that, that uses kind of like the, the flat rail. It's, it's almost, I'll say almost akin to like a door, uh, drawer slide type of rail. Not a ball bearing one, but a regular slide. Yeah, um, in fact, the we'll go on a little field trip here as far as my cable will let me which may not be too far um there is said tivo tarantula highly modified not working but at some point that will be a project and we will make it work again it will live another day and by the way for those of you that are, that are wondering um Polymaker spools can be used for a lot of things. A couple of small zip ties to make it one big stand. Um, but it does give me the added height that I need.
take a quick sip here. Yeah, um, I've got the, the small tripods, um, which work great on a desk, and I have a couple of them that are pointing to printers. Um, but the downside is, is I don't have, uh, I used to have two uh, regular tall tripods, and I don't anymore. Um, or at least if I do, I can't find them. So if Jen's still on the stream listening, uh, you know, if you get a chance, I should say Mr. Mrs. Dragon, uh, if you get a chance, you know, jot that down that we need to go find the, the regular tripod. Oh, I've got a Marlin build for the tarantula, and, and when it does get rebuilt, so the original tarantula board, I, of course, melted the, uh, the bed uh, connector on the controller board, like just about everybody does. So it was soldered directly to, and then I ran it, ran that into a MOSFET from then on out to offload it off the board. Exactly. You use what you have or you make it. Um, in fact, for the C270, you know, print them out, screws on to the 4020. And then the, um, it just slips right in there, and that's your mount for a C270. And so I'm running several of these um, to monitor printers. Um, so we've got our belt run. We've got it cut to relative length that we can tuck in underneath there. Um, next up. will be the plates, or the, the deck panels. And once again, um, I do have a CNC machine. Um, this is three millimeter thick ABS, uh, relatively one eighth inch or three millimeter. For whatever reason, the shiny sides, I always get them and they're, they're scratched up like this, so I don't want to show those. But the other side is a nice, good textured ABS surface. And does look like I need to do some finished drilling on this one. The, uh, the drill holes didn't go all the way through, so I do need to go ahead and drill those out if you bear with me. I will do that real fast. And, by the way, um, besides just a good set of metric drills, um, I will highly, highly suggest um, that you get a set of metric reamers as well. Um, this is, I'll say, a very cheap set off of Amazon. That's why they're not individually wrapped. You really should have them individually packaged and not in one big pack like this because it'll make the uh, reamer blades last a little bit longer. But the nice thing with reamers is, especially on printed parts, those holes may not be exact. And they, you know, on a, on a standard part, you know, like, like this, which is a through hole, um, no big deal. You can just take the drill and go right through it. But if it's a recessed hole and I needed to open the, the uh, part that, that the uh, button head itself will sit in, if it was too tight or there was burr in there, I don't want to take a drill in there because I can, I can enlarge the back hole and then I've got an issue. But using a reamer, it's, it's a flat end versus you know, the standard pointy drill end. So you can go in with the reamer and, and take it all the way down and really get a nice hole. And 
I am going to put you on mute in just a second as I go to drill these holes out. There's two five millimeter and one three millimeter hole. Okay, I'm going to put you guys on mute for just a second while I drill this. Okay, back. Hey, Evil Diesel, what's going on? Uh, we are continuing the Ender 3 to switch wire build. And I, uh, I had cut my panels yesterday on the CNC, and I had a couple of holes that didn't go all the way through. Um, but when I just do it quick deeper cleanup of the edges um so yeah i just need to touch those up and grab my deburring tool so i am going to put the uh, garbage can up here get yourself a nice Smooth edge there. It is amazing how sharp a plastic edge can be. Um, so I, I did a lot of aluminum work. Um, I was in the process of building an airplane. And, you know, so aluminum sheets, you know, you kind of expect it to be sharp. And, you know, I'll, I'll be working on the plane for a couple hours a day and I'll go home and and my hands will look like I've been in a cat fight all day. But you sit here, you start working with 3D printers and printed parts, and you're like, oh, no big deal. I've, I've gotten some nasty cuts on some printed parts. Some of these edges I wouldn't be too concerned of, but um, like especially this edge here, here, and this one right here where cables are going to be going through. So you definitely want to make sure that there's no burrs there um, because you can you know, wear out a cable or damage a cable over time. For the most part, these were pretty good cuts, but I do do want to clean up those areas.
and these deck panels are a little bit easier to get in right now um, because they have to get kind of wedged in there. It's a little bit easier to get them in there before you get too much on the printer itself. Feel like it laid down in there nicely. Okay. So the way that panel aligns is it goes right into whoops. Here we go. That panel lays right down into this groove. Um, and we'll lay on the crossbars here. So that's the part that I'll say gets a little bit of fun with this kick out over here. You just need to get it to a place where you can bend it down and around, so to speak. Okay, there we go. And that's why I just wanted to had it too far back. There we go. There we go. Um, so the way it works is there will be um, five millimeter bolts that go right here. And then there will be a three millimeter one at the front that will go on the leg extensions uh, that we'll put on. In fact, let me pop these back out and we'll put the leg extensions on first. Probably be a little bit easier before we flap these around. Um, we saw these, I'm going to set this down in the last stream. Um, there's two sets. So They'll link together and there will be one screw at each end that will help to clamp it together and then there's going to be a piece that goes across it that will provide some additional strength and rigidity to it and so that's how this piece will go and then it will uh, mount to the existing uh, extrusion here and then that will be for the front end. Um, yeah, so screw tilt adjust is really good and the fact, I mean, there, um, like CHEP has a routine that you can, uh, it's a G-code setting that you can run on a standard entered size bed. And I think he has one um, for the um, Ender 3 Max. And if not, it's, it's easy enough to, to modify and update that. That does the same thing. It goes to the four corners and you can adjust. Um, but I like screw tilt adjust. And then on the... Uh, the Mercury, which is the Inner 5 Plus turned into a zero G box, um, which has a triple lead screw for the bed. Um, being able to do the Z tilt adjust as well is something that helps because even if it's, uh, if you only have two lead screws, you can still get it, uh, you know, get it level to the gantry itself. And then it makes working the bed a little bit easier as well. All right, Chewy. For some reason, you are kicking off all the moderators today. <laughs> or the filters, yeah.
Yeah, so um, I use a um, an iPad. I use an iPad Pro. Um, and the nice thing is, is with Clipper, all you need is web interface. So I can sit up here and manage all the printers behind me, but I can also manage the two that are downstairs in the dining room. And if I'm going down there, um, you know, I normally I'll have a screen that I can also interface with. Um, but the zero G I haven't put a, a screen on. So I'll just grab the tablet and go down there and get started. And if I need to make any fine adjustments on the um, Z offset, I can, I can just time adjust it. Um, so let's, and these are, uh, M3 by 8. I've got way, way, way too many of these as well. Let's go ahead and load up our M3 by 8 bin here. And I believe I'm going to go through and uh, print out a bunch of Gridfinity um, uh, drawer systems and start stacking all my stuff there. Yeah, so like I said, I'm running a semi-hybrid setup. And so, yeah, the, the mod bot does kind of jump on some people. Hey, Solar3DP, how are you doing? Thank you for joining. Yeah, and I've done it on my phone as well. It's just with some of the, the setups, because I have web cameras on it, 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 the phone doesn't work as well sometimes. So. Thanks, Solar. Um, so yeah, we're gonna just go ahead and start putting this together. Um, once again, I'm pretty sure it was in three by eights for the side ones here. They may be Tenzo, and apparently I didn't read these ones. And I'm going to have to use my ball on the, my uh, ball drivers on this one. Do the angle. Yeah, the Clipper Club. Yes, I printed these parts. Um, I'm going to go to at least a 10 on these. Um, so I printed these parts. The majority of them were printed on my Voron B0 over here. With um, ones that are too big would be printed on the Ender 3 um, using a Wham Bam uh, hot box. Yeah, these these parts come out really nice. Um, this particular one was done on the V zero. And this is uh, KVP. Uh, it's a sparkle blue KVP filament. And then the other ones are a KVP graphite, which is kind of like a charcoal gray. Yeah, um, and that's the thing I like with the, um, sorry, I need to grab some M3 by 10 here. Um, that's the one thing I like with the um, Voron, it, that little V0 it is such a small area, it gets really warm. And I've had that chamber, I've, I've got no additional sealing. Like I've got the, um, 
uh, the foam sealant tape. I just haven't installed it yet. And even without using it, I can get chamber temps if I'm doing, you know, back to back prints. I'll get chamber temps in the upper 50s to low 60s. So just went ahead and uh, these will take M3 by 10s to be able to have the right uh, um, length to engage the uh, heat inserts. And we're going to get them there, but I'm not going to fully tighten them yet. Lesson learned, I need to get these on first and make sure that everything gets tightened up together. And these, I thought, would take the eights. Yeah. So see, eights, eights will have plenty of thread exposed there. Yeah, definitely. If you've got that set up, um, I don't have, I have polycar, I have polymaker polycarbonate. I have nylon. I've got carbon fiber ABS and carbon fiber PLA though for that particular usage, I would probably go with either ABS, ASA, PC, or nylon. Oh my god, hey S. Red Ingy, how's it going? Welcome in. Yeah. You know, that V0 prints so incredibly well, and I just saw that they, they came out with the uh, LDO just announced that they dropped the, or they're getting ready to drop the V0.2 um, upgrade kits. Um, I think they have it in four colors um, to start with, but they're going to go ahead and increase it to all the colors that they have for the V1. Or these are ones. Okay, yeah, whatever you want, uh, Evil Diesel, just let me know. Um, like I said, I'm set up. I can print on it, you know, for whichever you want. If you want to do the PC ABS, I can definitely print that for you. So, what are you up to tonight, S. Red Ingy? Actually, I should say, I know what he's up to. So for those that don't know, uh, Evil Diesel is uh, an old co-worker of mine from my military days when we were both stationed in Germany. And Esrad Ingi is my brother. So... Yeah, that's, that's what I really like to do is get my hand on the top. Um, the rest of it I'm not that worried about. I've already got a, um, so my V0 mods include a, um, um, that's really weird. Sorry, give me one second here. Um, lining up with a with a gap one edge and I'm not sure if maybe I well, let me see maybe I uh, got the right and left side mixed up or something um so the V0 um, I've got a umbilical PCB I've got the 
um, the rear um, PCB breakout between the motors to enclose the hot, uh, the hot uh, area. And that was, I tell you, that is one of the best um, quality of life mods that you can do on a printer. Because there's, I take two screws out of the front and undo, of course, the 14 pin umbilical cable and the end stop cable, and I can take the whole hot end off and then work on, on the bench without having to do anything else. Um, so yeah, that, that is an awesome, awesome mod. Yeah, you know, I had issues with the mini afterburner. I was getting jams, I was getting filament path issues. So the other mod I did was it is now running the uh, mini after Sherpa mod. Um, so it, it's a, yeah, that lines up a lot better. So I must have had those swapped over. Um, so it's a, uh, a Sherpa mini mounted to the bottom half of the afterburner and works really, really well. And I recently had a crazy, crazy um, print failure. And like, it was so bad, it ejected the print bed out the front of the printer. This is on an overnight print that, you know, I printed all day long, no problems, do an overnight print and it spits the, the uh, build plate out the front of the printer. And so I wound up at that time, it, it chewed up the gantry um, because in the process, when it flung it out, it loosened up the entire linear rail for the x-axis. And so it was flopping around and it gouged the gantry up. So you'll see the the shiny parts there were dug into the front edge of the gantry and the top edge, if I can get the lighting to work with me, um, you can see a couple of places where it dug in at the top edge. And so what I did was I went and got the extra light X-beam from Fabrico. Um, and it's a skeletonized uh, square aluminum piece. And so, yeah, it, it was definitely ugly. Even so uh, I got that, so I've now got the skeletonized X gantry, which of course required me to print new XY joints for it. And I also went and put the Kirigami bed mount on it. And with the Kirigami bed mount, um, which I have it, um, so the standard V0 bed mounts to the linear rail carriages with plastic parts. So over time, you can get a little bit of heat creep and a little bit of movement. So you have to constantly check them and tighten them down, which will cause you to get a little bit of sag as well. I went to the Kirigami and the Kirigami bed, it's straight aluminum mounting straight to those carriages. I set my uh, my bed level when I did that mod before Christmas. I have not leveled the bed once. And I've been printing, well, I printed all of these parts except for um, the, the middle section of the, actually, I think I did all of the, uh, the, the front skirts. Um, I printed all of those on the ender just because the middle piece the little ears that that mount between the two end pieces made it too big to go on the v0 yeah with the kirigami i have been straight up solid and of course also with that since there's no printed part you can use your loctite and you don't have to worry about any potential chemical interactions with your ABS making it brittle over time.
Yeah, so if, if you see here on which camera, there we go, there's a little bit of an edge, but not much. There was the, the way it was before, it was like that, where there's a big gap on one side versus a, a pretty uniform gap all the way around. Yeah, I posted that picture up on Twitter. I'll post it up again, uh, Titan. Um, but yeah, it, I, I don't know what happened, but yeah, it, it was all kinds of ugly. Yeah, I've got nothing but good things to say about the Kirigami bed mod. And the fact that LDO ships it as standard in their B0 S1, B's, yeah, B0 1 S1 kit, you know, is fantastic because it is a great mod. Um, and of course, they ship it with the uh, with the LED as well. Um, so you'll see mine has the LED back here. Um, and that's nice because just like the stealth burner, you can go ahead and run the same stealth burner, uh, config file and just set the pin and you can call it just like you do for the stealth burner or, or any of your other LGBs. Which one is that? The um, the Kirigami bed? Titan? Yeah, um, I will, well, you've, you've probably seen, um, Scott, Edge of 3D's um, Hydra Dance. Uh, I, he posted a short clip on YouTube uh, about the Hydra going through and, and writing itself. Um, that, yeah, just, it's neat. I, I thought at one point, you know, seeing the, the Trident and, and its ability to do that, and I was like, eh, is that really that big of a deal? And having done it on the uh, zero G, yeah, yeah, it's really it's really a big deal, especially having so many issues chasing and keeping bed level on like an Ender five or excuse me, uh, uh, an Ender three or any Ender printer. Um, yeah, it having the ability to adjust itself like that is, is awesome. And at one point, um, I. Actually, I still do have dual lead screws on my inner three, but at one point I was doing the the Z tilt on the inner three, and it's it's really good at at least aligning the um, the gantry to the center of the bed because I do it right at the center of the bed, um, which does help somewhat um, to keep things nice and level. All right, so we have these. These are the two front extensions. And those will get mounted right to the front through the, through the regular tapped holes. Move this back to make it easier to see. And those are going to be more of our N10 button, button head screws. Oh yeah, definitely. And it's just cool to see. Especially if you've got, you know, somebody coming over and wanting to look at the printer and you can just be like, hey, check this out. Look what it can do. 
And then between that and um, but between doing that and you know your your um, BL Touch or Clicky Probe or whatever you've got set up, it, it's definitely worthwhile. And these back to, I'm probably going to switch over and use the ball screw as well just to make sure I can get into them. And, ah, um, Jen, are you, are you still listening to the stream? If you're listening, could you reply in chat? Okay, there is a ball driver downstairs, larger one of these, by the Zero G machine. Can I get you to bring it to me? I feel like another streamer that has family that can grab things for them. Yeah, this is one of those places we're having a ball driver. Give me one second. Here you go. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Having a ball driver to get at an angle is definitely going to be the way to go here. chase the threads on with a tap or just not run a screw in there for right now. I'll have to work on that in a second. I know it'd be funny, a Creality machine that has bad threaded holes in them. You have something coming in for me that I can unbox on the stream. Do I want to ask what it is? Oh, thank you, Titan Gamer, for the donation. Uh, I did not see that, and my audible alerts are we'll say not working at the moment. Okay. It's not going to get me in trouble, is it? <laughs> Let me get caught up on chat here. Yeah, I'll need to give her, I'll have to give her a call sign soon. Okay, I'm not sure who donated $2 anonymously, but thank you so much. All right. All righty, so... We may have to hold off on this because either we take a look at these. Let's 
So I'm trying to figure out. It feels like I'm cross threading these, and I don't want to cross thread them. So. make sure that I don't cross thread them. How about that? Because that would lead to a bad day. Let's see if we can't raise you guys up some. Whoops. There we go. That way, Luke. Um, all I'm going to do is just chase these threads with the screw real fast. Shouldn't, but, but might. Yeah. Oh, have a good one, Titan Games. Sorry I didn't see that. You have a good night. So Evil Diesel, how's the uh, um, the resin printing going? Did you finish those prints for your buddy or are you still working on those? Okay, well, hey, my other half knows your other half, and if, if I haven't been taken out by your other half for getting you so deep into 3D printing already, uh, you know, I think we're safe. Dang, two kilo of resin already. Well, you're getting, you're getting some use out of that, and that was the uh, Mars 3 Pro, correct? Yeah, so I don't know if that was just, you know, bad threads. Um, there's a couple of these that felt almost like I was about ready to cross thread and then they broke. So they might just have some burrs in them. Um, but I just wanted to run a screw down through them. And if I sacrifice one of these, oh well. But so I don't know if it's that or if, if my print maybe just off dimension wise a little bit or manufacturing defect or what, I don't know. I mean, it is a, a Creality machine base frame. So, oh yeah, that one felt like it had a burr in it. No, I don't need an impact driver. I don't need to cross thread these and blow them out. Um, though, yeah, there. Um, so there's been several people um, that have gone out and gotten uh, electric screwdrivers, um, like the USB rechargeable electric screwdrivers, and eh, those are okay. And that one is a little easier. Joys of big fingers trying to get into recessed holes. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I just I just needed to run a screw through those threads. I'm 
the Taz 6. Okay. Oh, really? Okay, and the Taz, that's the, that's the uh, older Walls bot models, right? Um, I guess, were, was that the models before Walls bot got sold and they came out with the 740 or 737, 747 line? Okay, one down, one to go. Let's see if I can turn this around. Not block you all off too much. Okay. Yeah, I know Lowell's bot has gone through ownership changes. A couple of times. Oh, yeah, that, that's a heck of a deal. It's like uh, Westry One just picked up a um, uh, Prusa Mini for a really good deal considering it's got uh, some upgrades on it. It's already got the uh, Revo Micro Hot End on it. Yeah, hopefully it was, I'll say, decently well cared for and it doesn't require a ton of maintenance to get that up and running. So, we got those extensions on there, and for those that, that aren't knowledgeable, the, um, the switch wires are actually, um, their lower rails are 3060 rails. So they're the, the 30 millimeter rails like a Prusa Mini, but they're 60 millimeters deep. So these actually have a two piece spacer system that once again will, um, you'll put two screws in there and attach it together. And then these will mount to the bottom. They'll be screwed in to the front leg to add support. And they'll be screwed in uh, through the front leg to add support. And then they'll have holes here. Uh, these are five millimeter holes and that's where the feet will uh, go in and attach to the base. So we will pull this down for a second. We'll get these put together. Get a couple of uh, uh, M5 bolts in there and get the Get these attached in, and then our, we'll put our deck plates on. We'll be ready to go. Screw down. There it is. Yep, it's work perfectly for this. Slight adjustment here for you guys. Oh wow, so the dual head's still in the box. That's kind of crazy if they bought a machine that expensive and sold it for that that cheap. I wonder if they were, we'll say one of the pandemic people that were 
thinking that, oh, I'm just going to get a printer and I'll start selling stuff and making money, but. Okay, and it uses the, is it use the 3 millimeter or the 2.85 millimeter filament, Stephen Poole? And by the way, folks, Stephen Poole does stream. Uh, he's got some really, really good prints. His, his machines are very, very well tuned. So if you want to see some good quality prints, you definitely go out and check out Stephen Poole on his stream. Prince the word. Yeah, well. You know what? For a deal like that, I, I would drive four hours to pick it up. And remember, boys and girls, if you're screwing righty-tighty and righty-tighty turns to lefty-loosey, you went too far. And even though you may be screwing into uh, brass heat sets, you can still pull them out of plastic. So watch the Ugga Duggas. And I'm going to take a sip of water real fast. and pull something off the printer. And for those of us that caught our stream um, last week, when we made the upgrades to the Prusa Mini, you know, get in some crazy light and you will see some a little bit of artifacts, but let's see if this one. It's a little bit better here. So this is the top surface. Or excuse me, it, it was printed like this on the on the uh, print bed. So overhang did pretty well. I am still getting some, some like banding artifacts off of this. But there we go, there's that light. But you really have to put it in a strange angle to see that. Um, no skill to work on printers. Yeah. Hey, Royal Nomi, glad you're back. Or you're still here, okay. Okay, so yeah, we just pulled this off the printer. Uh, once again, this is printed on the Prusa Mini that we did the upgrades to. Um, it's running the Revo Micro Hot End, and we did the Bontech Extruder upgrade with the integrated filament sensor. And if everything worked out well, Flips right in. We got our little 
Fabrico logo on it. And our our uh, things have a new home now. So here we go. Four, three, four, five. There we go. Now we can keep those over there in the corner and, and grab them when we need them. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to put these on. Set it back like that. We need a couple of our M5 uh, rolling T nuts. For a tie break. Oh, did you go eat dinner? Yeah, you say that, Chewy. Um, me and Evil, Evil Diesel, we went and there was a um, there's a new place in town here in Raleigh, North Carolina that that opened up, and they do. They have a um, it's a repair center, and they primarily work on reality machines, but they do sales, they do repairs, and they sell. Um, filament as well. These are going to decidedly not be M5 by 10s. Go with one of the other ones here. I need those, and what do I do with the beak? Yeah, so we'll put those on temporarily. Um, the feet on that is, and then we'll have to take those off when we go to when we're done with the electronics and we go to put the um, the bottom panel on. Because what will happen is it'll go rubber foot bottom panel through this um, through the uh, extension piece. And then into the railing. From the looks of it, I am going to have to switch these over to the M3s. Oh, there we go. I want to go ahead and do this and get it up on the feet because it'll make it easier to move around. Okay, you made your chili a little bit too spicy, huh? I really don't think. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I uh, I like making spicy chili, however. Um, I can't do way spicy stuff anymore. Just 
going to get that started to make it easier. Oh, you're telling Royal Nomi. I was like, chores? I didn't know I had chores. Don't tell Jen I need chores. I think we all hate chores, Royal Nomi. Is that the Carolina Reaper Chili Chewy? Or are you referring to uh, a different type of Reaper Chili? do a couple heat sets because I forgot the uh, heat set inserts in these. The good thing is, is it doesn't take long for the uh, soldering iron to heat up. You know, somewhere I need to find somebody that sells um, the uh, heat set inserts and in like 500 or a thousand pack. Hey, Daddy Wazzy. Hey, no problem. Sorry I, I miss you when you're coming in. Um, I got to apologize. I was in the process of, of changing my stream configuration over to um, from OBS and streamer bot to OBS and owned, uh, owned pro. And along the way, for whatever reason, every time I had the, um, the uh, voice alerts, it would take over the microphone and cut me completely off stream and the only way to get it back was to switch back over to my stream so until i can get through tech support um i'm still gonna i'm not getting the the notification sounds that people are coming in but yeah i i definitely saw some we'll say some issues that have been transpiring and in, in Twitch and Twitter feeds lately, and I I don't get it. I mean, all I want to do is hang out, chill with people, and stream, right? And so I, I'll watch anybody, I'll watch everybody. Now, if, if you're a, a you know, and I don't mind colorful language, but if you're a jerk to people um, online, I, I'll just unfollow you. I, I don't need to waste my time on on people you know so definitely appreciate you hanging out with us um but yeah i, I fully understand where you're coming from there and the nice thing is is i get these almost all the way through and the edge of my workbench is metal so I can just run it right across the edge of that workbench and it'll make sure that that is nice and flush. 
I don't have to worry about burning my fingers in the process. Yeah, apparently uh, WTF is getting modded for whatever reason. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm in a, I'll say a hybrid type setup right now because I don't remember it being modded before. Um, but yeah, I've got to get that squared away and figured out. And for those that weren't on at the beginning of the stream, um, I, I did get in a new camera yesterday. So my primary camera here is now a Logitech Brio 4K. And my so I moved the uh, Logitech C922 over to the, uh, the workbench camera. So hopefully that'll allow it to... Uh, autofocus some because the um, oh wow these gotta get in both sides the uh, C270 would just blur out a lot You're out, Stephen Pool. Yeah, definitely let us know how that that task looked and how it works, because that's that'd be pretty cool. The only thing that that sucks about the Taz and, and some of those low bot, low spot machines is they're the three millimeter filament, and it's it's not as hard to find, but there's definitely a lot more options in the 1.75. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a, uh, like, a rainbow silk or anything in, in a 3 millimeter. Yeah, and, and I've seen some people talking about, you know, wanting to go over and stream on YouTube or start doing some content over on YouTube. And y'all have to say, seeing some of the creators that are over on YouTube, um, like Nero and Steve Builds and uh, Daniel Modbot, they, uh, yeah, they get their fair share of, we'll just call them crappy uh, commenters on their videos. And it's like, I just, I don't get it. Oh, they're trying, uh, Nick's, Nick and Polymaker are trying to bring, uh, darn it, are trying to, to bring the, uh, like, rainbow silks and stuff over to the 3 millimeter, or just get rainbow silk going at, at all? Because I know they were working on rainbow silk. Okay, Evil Diesel, be safe. Oh, that's right, it's Tuesday night. Um, kid was at, uh, was, was uh, the kid at uh, martial arts practice. Yeah, so these uh, these rubber compressor wheels, they don't have, or compressor wheels, compressor feet, 
They don't have the, uh, the metal insert like some of them do. So just, you know, once again, be careful with the Ugga Duggas. Uh, there's no sense in really cranking down on them. And then, once again, at each end of their, these has a threaded insert so that it will attach to uh, the front piece as well as attach uh, eventually to the rear skirts. So just make sure you get those screws in as well. That's going to be another one of those weird angle ones. So pole driver it is. And I'm using M3 by 8 uh, cap head socket screws for that. Once again, these rolling nuts work well on T-slot. They don't always work well on B-slot, but it's enough that it'll catch. And then, so I don't have to fight gravity too much, I'll just go ahead and get the first one started. And then the second one, I'll put through, get the T-nut started a turn or so and then go ahead and slide it on from underneath. Yeah, I bet the the 2.85 millimeter is, like I said, there's not a whole heck of a lot of it. And what is out there, it's it's really just in the commercial space. Um, it's not, you know, the hobby, the hobby side of it's pretty much done with. Yeah, I'm trying to think who does like 2.85 millimeter anymore. Because I, I know Nick had a few colors, but it, there really wasn't much of a selection. Um, But yeah, just you know, just having multiple different uh, uh, production lines because you'd have to have a completely separate production line to try and keep up with the you know the right specs. That that just sounds like it'd be a pain in the butt. Okay, so that is where we are at at the moment. Um, apparently, I also need heat inserts um, in the front and this will hold the front edge of the um, 
the front edge of our deck plates on. So I just unplug this. So we plug back in and we'll just pop those in real fast. And then yeah. we'll go ahead and put the deck panels on. We can also put the uh, um, front and rear skirts on. We got to do the two on the bottom as well that will hold the deck panel in. Yeah, so the, there are some mods, and I want to say maybe even the V1 of the Dark Dog mod that didn't extend the, the front. So you would have to have a completely different and shorter. Um, panel section and the bed was kind of just hanging towards the front um, over the over the front skirts so the nice thing with doing the printed extensions is one it's, it's pretty sturdy and you're not mounting the legs to that extension um, so it's really not like it's holding weight it's more of just a uh, so I'm using the motor as a flat surface to try and make sure that it's pushed in all the way. And it will also pull some of the heat out of it quicker. Um, so yeah, if, if we were just like this, then your bed, so your bed's coming like way out here, so it's coming way over the front edge. So by doing it this way, you can still run the full enclosure and enclose the printer. Um, if, you, if you didn't want to do that, you could um, just let it, uh, you know, just do the short uh, front skirts. And then, yeah, no big deal. But I do like to have the option down the road, and I think it looks nice. Um, so yeah, we've got that done. Now let's go ahead and grab some parts here. So the front skirts are actually these, yeah, the front skirt are actually the skirts. So you've got a three piece skirt. So You've got the two sides in the middle, and the middle has a little bit of play. That's an oval hole, so you can actually work it around and make it fit um, once you get it on the, on the front of the machine. And the way you start off is you actually will put the skirts together. Go ahead and drop this down here for a minute. And then you'll mount the skirt to the printer itself. And once again, it's, it's just a three-way piece. The two end pieces on the front are the same, so it really doesn't matter which side's which. Um, and then, yeah, I just felt like I, I had a layer line. Um, on this piece, this is where your, your screen's going to mount. And on this printer, I've got an interesting mount solution going on. Um, but there is a hole at the top. This is the top piece. So you'll just have to be cognizant of that when you actually go to mount it. That the gap will be at the top.
we'll go ahead and use those M3x8 screws again. Probably get away with M3x6s on here. Not a problem, Royal. Lurk all you want. I appreciate lurks. I appreciate follows. And hopefully, pretty soon, I'll make uh, affiliate and I'll be able to accept cheers and subs. Not required. Always appreciated. You know, I'll say subs are more important. Kids are important. And quite honestly, I'll say that's why I didn't start streaming uh, until I did is because for the Christmas break, my uh, younger son came over and spent a couple weeks with us. And he's more important to hang out with. Sorry, I love y'all, but um, go ahead and get the back piece put together. Um, there, there's not a sub button yet. Of, um, I won't get sub buttons until I make affiliate. I believe. Um, so, yeah. You know, when you've got, you know, teens or 20-year-old kids that are single and they still like hanging out with you, you know, you got you to gotta pay attention to them. That and my kids are kind of like my movie buddies. Love my wife, but she doesn't like going to the movies that much. And it's one of the things I always do with my kids when they're out here is we always go to at least one movie. Yep, real life always comes first. No kids that you know of, huh? Yep. Okay, and so the rear panel, um, you'll have a spot to mount your fan. I believe it's the 60-20 uh, fan. And the mount, this will be the actual uh, um, inner, sta oh, inner uh, mounting. So we'll just take the the plug straight out of the ender, plug it right in there, and away we'll go. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll get these mounted up. And print her back up here. Kind of getting a little interesting. Um, and once again, run through by eights. will still work fine for this. I want to say when I did, whoops, when I did the uh, the red inner switch wire, um, I probably used um, M3 by six button head screws for this. Um, and we will stop again for some heat sinks because I still can't figure out apparently how to do heat sinks or heat sets and get them all done at the same time which is weird because I tried to do them all before the stream and apparently missed a bunch
Yeah, so hopefully in the not too distant future, I'll uh, I'll hit the point where I can I can get subs and stuff like that. Um, you know, not too far off, but it's a process. We'll get there. And I do eventually want to add music to the stream. But once again, got to make things, the basics work first. finger that time. It's been a while since I've done that. And I toyed around with, um, and I think I'm going to do it, and that's um, on this particular ender, I've got to check and see if the X and uh, Z motors, um, well, the Z motor obviously wouldn't, but see if the uh, X motor um, has the press on pulley. If it does, then I have a couple of um, Stepper on line motors, and I will just use these, and that way I know I won't have a problem. Um, they're the, uh, I, know I got them as a, as a five set kit. Let's see if this one will auto focus a little bit better. But, you know, the nice thing about that is. Or actually, not the nice thing, but the biggest thing I'll have to do there is just check the, uh, oh, the, um, uh, make sure I get the right, the two poles lined up. And, you know, I might have to change the pin out on the cable and make it work. Because when I did the, the first inner wire, I went with two parts built motors for um, the X and Z motors and didn't think twice about it. Reused the Creality cables and the uh, the phases weren't right. So I had to uh, go and swap the pins, you know, the pins on the cable, which isn't that big of a deal. It's not hard to do. It's just something you got to be aware of. It makes a god awful sound when you've got your motors out of phase. So we've got those in now. And once again, your hole here is going to be your up. And we're just going, um, there's, there's two holes right above the uh, hexagon. And that will be the mount to mount this to the front carriage. For carriers, the uh, front extension legs. Wow, that's way off. I can't even. I'm going to have to 
double check that that center so the centerpiece here um, that I used on this one is designed it's going to be kind of a little surprised but it was designed to use the standard Creality um, display unit and that obviously is not going to work so I will have to reprint that center part, and uh, it's, it's definitely a different part to mount the uh, standard Fistec. Um, well, mine will be mine's from uh, Fizetic Fistec, um, 1280, 12.864 display. Chat got quiet. Did I lose everybody? Right again. But, ah, eating dinner? Gotcha. Gotcha. So what I'm going to do right now, since this centerpiece is too short, like I said, this particular centerpiece is designed to work with the standard Creality display. We'll just toss that over in the corner, and I will have to uh, reprint that piece in the right... Uh, and the right one so that I can go ahead and mount the bisect display. So we'll add that in on the next stream. And really, I'm running a little bit longer than I anticipated. Normally, I go till 7, 7.30. So what we'll do is we'll get these put on. Got you, Nomi. So we'll get these put on. Um, we'll I'll print the other one, and we'll have that for the next stream, and we'll get that one going. Um, we'll put we'll go ahead and put the back in because the back will fit, should fit, better fit. All right. Yep, and. So, another thing to note, you've got your 5 millimeter bolts because it goes directly into the back piece, but these, um, you also have an M3 screw that will go down into that extension piece that we uh, attached, which means that needs to be going this way, which means my center section is on backwards or upside down. So, let me flip that over real fast. Yeah, and so it's a little hard because they don't have a dedicated manual for this. So it's really what I'm doing is going through and looking at the um, Voron Switchwire manual and saying, okay, I've got a different frame. No problem. Get the frame put together, squared up as best as possible because we are dealing with extruded aluminum. And if you've watched a uh, stream by a certain... Canadian recently, you'll know that not all extrusions are high quality extrusions. Um, they may be warped, they may have a bit of a, uh, a twist to them, but you try and do the best you can to square it up and get it level. So what I do is go out to the kitchen where I have a uh, marble uh, counter and use that because that is going to be a, a really flat surface 
you can use that or if you've got a uh, uh, an electric stove with a glass top that's another really really flat surface that you can use um, I suggest if you have a significant other um, do it when they're not around and hopefully when they're not listening to your stream um, when, otherwise they find out that you may be doing that they'll get mad uh, the, the switch the switch wire manual is not bad but then again um, I'll say uh, I I originally wanted to be an architect so I I kind of in, in high school and then when I started college I was dealing with exploded view diagrams so the exploded view diagrams aren't that big of a deal for me and I was also starting to build an airplane which once again it's a lot of exploded view diagrams uh, maybe one day I'll, I'll show one of the plan pages from that and you guys can see what that looks like because there's some of them that will make these little 3D printer manuals look like child's play um, once again these will go in the outer edge um, screw holes All right, Royal, you're off the phone again. So, so does BC have nightmares of polynomials now, Royal? I feel like I am. There we go. Like I'm waiting for the screw to catch and realize that I'm right in the middle of the extrusion. I missed the screw all together, or the hole all together. So I'm just snugging these down just tat, you know, sn sn I'm tightening until I feel it kind of catch and get resistance and I'm backing it off just a tad. And I'm doing that because I need to line up several holes and I'll go back and tighten it down. Um, because once again, we've got the M5 holes in the frame, the M3 hole in the uh, printed extension piece on the frame. Um, and then, I'm going to put it up on the side. And there's hard to see. There are two holes right here that go into heat set inserts in the bottom of the Y or the Y motor mount. And that will help make this back piece really solid and rigid, which is good because of course you'll be plugging and unplugging and stuff like that. So you want to make sure that you've got a um, a solid surface there to be pushing in against. We use the ball socket on this. I got those two in. I will go ahead and tighten those up because that's a, a tight fit around that motor piece. And that will also help line up the end pieces when I go to tighten the back edge here. And we'll take two more M8 screws and we'll add that, you know, one at the top, one at the bottom down here so that it's locked in all the way around and that's something you got to remember is these little m3 screws 
um, because when you forget about them, then you're uh, sorry. I know I'm not. Here we go. We'll do this one so you can see. So we're trying to hit that screw right there or that hole. And so that's locking the face plate or the, the skirt into that extension piece that we have the, the legs on. We're trying to, that's why. Okay. Why are we? Not getting lined up there. But we're lined up. We just may need a little bit more movement ability. Big man holes, little screws, little parts. There we go. on here. I swear that felt like it was lined up or looked like it was lined up. Hey Westry, you're back. Yeah. Small screw, the bigger screw, the little bit bigger screw, the long screw, the okay. What I'm gonna do is loosen that for a minute. Maybe it's just that I had that ugga dugga down a bit. Couldn't get enough play to line it up. That's why I said you might need to leave some of these a little loose to give yourself some play. Here we go, boom. And then start tightening everything back down once you get it going. And of course, once again, we're gonna have to take these uh, the feet off anyhow when we go to put the. Uh, the bottom cover piece on. And it's always good to remember because I was sitting there on the red one and decided, okay, I, I need to get in here and work on the on the Manta board. Hey Amish man, thank you for stopping by. Um, yeah, so this is the Ender 3 Pro to switch wire build. I'm using the Dark Dog um, version 2 files. Um, and the difference is, well, there are a few differences, but one of the main ones is on the version 1, the front skirts go right at the front of the extrusions rather than having the extension here. The nice thing with the extension is it allows you to do a full... Um, a full enclosure like any other switch wire um, and the filament here this is a KVP um, sparkle blue and my accent parts for this one is this KVP um, graphite which is kind of like a, a charcoal gray color and I really like this I, I mean I'm, I'm about ready to go in and buy like a dozen spools of this just to have it. Um, I, I really like that color. 
Um, so we just tighten that side. Let's flip it over. We'll tighten. We'll get the other screw in and tighten this side, and then we'll tighten the um, panels in the back. And so go ahead and loosen this up just a tad. So we got some movement there so we get it lined up. Yeah, the thingamabob, the whatchamacallit. And she goes, ah, oh, I know exactly what you need. This is ABS. So this is KVP um, ABS. Um, and the blue is a, 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 a sparkle ABS. If you give me a second, I'll, I'll get you the exact name. Find, find the socket head screw when you're not looking at it. Okay. And... Yeah, it's KVP, which is Keen Village Plastics, Sparkle Blue, ABS Filament. Um, so we've got those, and now what we're going to do is just tighten these four, and that will lock the three plates together. Again, these are going into heat inserts um, in plastic. You can pull them out and through, so you know, don't don't hug a dug and crank like you're trying to dig to China or anything on here. You're just trying to snug them up, keep it from rattling. Awesome. And there you go. Like I said, our the same the actual inner three plug will pop that out and we'll mount this in here and then a 6020 fan will go on this side and we've got accent pieces that go on there so if you're looking at you know what what the heat set inserts were for this it's just to cover it up so you don't see all the screws. And to make that look nice, what we'll do is we will grab some black uh, M3 by 6 button head screws. So that you really won't notice them against that graphite as much. Um,
yeah, blue, blue is my favorite color as well. Um, so you'll see a, I've got a lot of blue on my printers around here. Um, the Give me a second and I'll switch the view around here. So uh, the boron V0 over here is baby blue. Um, this is Red Dragon. This is Redbot, which is a DBot Core XY. Um, you have Purple Haze, which is a um, Crucial Mark III uh, bare frame, which is the extruded frame, uh, extrusions frame. And that's printed in purple uh, ABS, hence why it's purple haze. Um, we have Black Dragon, which is the Ender. And it actually has blue for blue ABS parts for the Sherpa Mini and the mount for the Sherpa Mini. Um, we have another Mark III, um, which I call uh, Stealth. Um, because it's all blacked out. And I have another Prusa Bear down here. Um, and that one's Black Bear because it's all blacked out as well. Um, I also have a Zero-G Mercury, which is based on an Ender 5 Plus frame. Um, that's downstairs in the dining room. And I've also got a um, Ender 3 Max down there as well. And I got those for when I was doing the Toys for Tots prints. Just allowed me to do a lot more prints a lot quicker. Um, Yeah, the all blackout's nice. Um, I'm, you know, I went through that phase when I was a teenager where, you know, I had the, it was a 84 or 82 or 84 uh, Ford Escort that me and my brother, uh, you know, went through and we added the, oh, the windshield wiper you know, uh, downdraft wings on it and uh, went through and replaced all or painted all the trim white and stuff like that to do the, you know, kind of the, say the ghetto pet my ride. Um, still kind of love that car, but apparently Ford transmissions, manual transmissions, um, I said Ford. I'll just go with any transmission does not like getting dumped into second gear doing 85 miles an hour down the highway. And the story behind that is one we won't get into on the street. Chewie's at it again. Get in the mind. <laughs> yeah. I think back in the day, yeah, just about everybody. I mean, that was kind of like the uh, the car that a lot of people had. Oh, the Chevy Beretta? Yeah, those were good cars. Um, Yeah, 
Yeah, me and my brother did some things back in the day that, you know, we, how, how we didn't get put in jail, I don't know. I just chalk it up to we were down in Florida, which is a penal colony anyhow, so. Yeah, me and my brother both learned how to drive a, a manual in that Ford Escort, and yeah, it, it. I think we went through four or five sets of tires and three sets of brakes in that car, and after after dumping it in second gear doing 85 down the highway, um, yeah, something about. We were coming back from Daytona Beach. We were driving in the emergency lane because traffic was bad. And I think we got flipped off by a priest. And somebody swerved out in front of us, which caused them to... My brother was driving at the time, and he dropped it into second gear to keep from hitting them. And it kind of... Uh, it, it not only ate the transmission up, but we bent the crankshaft. Okay, so yeah. So Chewy, you're asking about the ender. So this is a I'll say a standard ender three. It's got um, linear rails. On it for the Y axis, it's got a linear rail for the X axis, and it's currently running a Penda Pro with an ABS mount that I, I just, it screws directly to the, uh, it's just like an M3 screw with a nut, and it goes right through the top vent and the side of the, of the Ender 3 hot end mount. And I'm running a Sherpa Mini that is printed in ABS. Yeah, that, that was funny. That was kind of shocking when we got flipped off by the priest. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Westry, how's it going? Interesting chat you walked back into, huh? Yeah, it was funny too because I don't think it was that time, but there was another time that we were out there and a buddy of mine, I was on the football team, and we had like seven um, linemen, either offensive or defensive linemen, linebacker type, you know, the bigger, us bigger dudes. There were seven of us in an IROC Z28 that went down to the beach. I got sunburned to no end. And I rode back from Daytona Beach to Orlando in the back, uh, like drop down well in a Z28 right underneath that big panoramic window at like four in the afternoon. So I got cooked even worse. Yeah, yeah, we were so, so smushed in that car. Yeah, so so the my OG Ender um, three, I I call it Black Dragon. Yeah, I, I, I call it Black Dragon. It's it's a I say OG. It's a it's a standard Ender three with the single forty twenty uh, Y rail, and so I've got uh, a linear rail on each side of it for the y-axis and then there's a I'll, I'll call it a floating uh, x-axis linear rail um, I'll have to oh 
trying to remember the name of the uh, anyhow it's, it's kind of like two L brackets that hold the, the X linear rail up so you can still keep the same belt path um, and that works really really well also a lot easier to do maintenance on exactly and especially when we're all big dudes oh you got Saruman and Gandalf yeah um, I'm a dragon guy um, I grew up uh, my aunt got me started on uh, Lord of the Rings and then in all through uh, high school I was reading Dragonlance novels and I always loved dragons and it feeds in well with my career of choice which is cybersecurity because a lot of your cyber and cyber related intelligence fields in the military um, the symbol is normally normally has a dragon it's normally like a purple dragon now I'm going to play heck trying to get this one in without breaking it there we go you just have to wiggle it around and never get in there so oh, helps if I show you so the deck panels you have to you have to work them around a little bit to get them underneath the motor and everything but the deck panels will slide up underneath and you've got a little bit of a slot that keys into the uh, the extrusion and then it'll be M5, M5 and an M3 that goes in and holds the uh, holds on to the extension in the front and that'll be your deck panels and you'll have you have little cutouts right here for the X and Z motors this will be the where the cable chain will mount to come up to the uh, X gantry and then there's a hole right back here that the Y motor and the Y end stop will drop down into and there's one over here I'm trying to remember what goes over into this one. Oh, the uh, the bed the bed wires so on this one your bed wires come around the front and a cable chain and will go right down in the back hole here yes yes Westray I like I like dragons um, hence why I picked up the, the moniker digital dragon because I do do cybersecurity I just said do um, I am a cybersecurity professional, and doing that in the military, it just um, just felt like the, the right thing to do. Whoop. I'm just going to clean up some. I think at this point, um, then we'll go ahead and, and mount the uh, go ahead and drop these in um, real fast. And once again, the front deck panels, I will use the button heads just because they kind of disappear and I, I like it better. Um, my M5s will be button heads definitely, but they will be shiny just because I, that's the only ones I have. Exactly, exactly, that's right, Angie. You know, it's my brother, by the way. Um, for those of you that uh, joined later in the stream, uh, I grew up, like I said, on uh, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings. Um, you know, so in The Hobbit, you have Smog, who's a dragon, and then in uh, all the Dragonlance novels. Close, move it in place, line it up.
Yeah, and you definitely want to get your deck panels on now before um, you start routing your wires through. Um, just because once you, especially like once you put the bed on, trying to get these panels up underneath it is very, very difficult. And you don't really want to bust any of them up. So that's right, Angie. You've been sitting here this whole time, and you never chimed in when we were talking about the the escort and tearing out the transmission and bending the crank in it, having to do a full engine rebuild. And we go through and do a full engine rebuild with our dad, and you know we had everything laid out on the garage floor so we could put it back together, and we we had a few extra bolts and screws here and there, but the engine was running. And my dad took it down. He was he worked at a company that had some fleet trucks. Yeah. And uh, so he took it down and had the mechanic that looked at all the fleet trucks look at it just to make sure that, you know, it wasn't going to, like, self-destruct on us. And the guy's like, oh, no, you guys did a great job. Don't worry about the little bit of oil leaking out of the rear main seal. That just takes a while to, to fully seal up. He goes, but... Uh, you want me to quote you how much it's going to cost to replace the rack and pinion steering in it? Because that's about out. And my dad's like, don't bother. And we went looking for cars that night. Oh, yes, yes, I am looking forward to that when it comes out. Yeah, so Evil Diesel's not on right now, but he's actually building um, a D&D &D gaming table so that like his dining room table he'll be able to just open it up and the table sits right down there and it's, it's got a steel sheet across the top of it and he's printing miniatures for everybody's characters so that they'll and it'll be um magnetized so that you can move it around the dungeon and everything can stay there and you just close the table up after gaming day which is uh normally saturdays You know what, if you put everything together and you have no spare bolts, you probably did something wrong because like everything I've done has extra bolts in it or extra bolts left over when you're done because, well, let me rephrase that. Most printer manufacturers these days are providing at least one spare bolt of each kind because everybody loses them. The wheel bearing brakes, oil change, or lack thereof. Well, I told him we went through, what was it? It was like four or five sets of tires and like three brake jobs. And we're, we're talking full brakes, like drums and rotors. Like we, we tore past the pads and damaged the rotors so they couldn't be turned anymore.
Yeah, so once again, size-wise, I can cut um, most of these panels on my Shape Elko 3XL. Um, on the um, Mercury 1, I couldn't have cut them myself. Um, I could have taken the DX files and, and set up the cut job and gone up to SRAD Engies and used his because he's got the Shape Oko 4, uh, it was the 4 Pro, right? And it's the, it's the 4XXL, which is a 32 inch by 32 inch cut area where mine's a 16 by 32 inch cut area. And these panels here, I mean, they literally took like, it, it took longer to put the uh, double sided tape and stick it down than it did to actually cut the panels out. Yeah, the 4 Pro XL, XXL. Yeah. So the other thing you'd probably understand a little bit better to us, Red Ingy, would be uh, the laser. Just because it's dealing with um, well, it's power levels and feed rate still. Um, and it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, you're, you're in essence designing the cut just like you would on the Shape Oko um, using carbide. It, it is, Software is fairly similar to carbide, um, and then it's just going out and testing it. And um, the wife's been working on really going through it and testing out the power and speed settings to get them just right. And she was starting, and these were some test uh, engraves. And of course, these were going to be the machine name plates. And the plan was we we're going to put, uh, we we're going to seal them up, we're going to sand them down, seal them up, and then put a strip of um, magnetic tape on the back of them. And then that way we can just put them right underneath the, um, you know, we can mount them right underneath the printers. And then that way, if, because she had a problem when I would be sitting up here in the middle of the day. I would mute on a call and I would yell down and say, hey, can you stop this printer? And she's like, which one? There's three of them down here running. So get, getting a name on them helped. Um, and like I said, I think I'm at a stopping point right now. Um, so we got... The belt ran for the, we, we swapped out the Y motor and made sure that we got a, uh, a a good pulley on it. And I might have to adjust that just a tad bit and definitely uh, put Loctite on that. I'll do that off stream and got that lined up so our, our bed plate moves well. Um, we've got the extensions added on and Got the extensions added on, the back skirt, and most of the front skirt. I need to reprint the front piece here. Um, there will be another piece that will mount up underneath here and lock into that front, just like we did back here with the Y motor. And uh, then we'll start building up the um, we'll start building up the actual uh, Z-axis gantry system and getting the idlers put on, the key back installed, get our, ant our gantry put together, and we'll start doing that on the next stream. So with that, um, I am going to go ahead and call this over.
Um, we've been going for about three hours now. So thank you everybody for showing up. Um, we are going to raid out to somebody. Does anybody have a suggestion on who to raid out to? Or does anybody know who's on right now that you might want to raid out to? Thank you very much, the honest man. Thank you for hanging out. I think, yes, Subsector is on, um, and that sounds great. She has been very helpful, and she's been cheering me on to start uh, streaming. So give me one second. Please hang out with me, um, and let's raid into Subsector. I think most of the names I've seen um, are already members of Subsector. If not, um, Please hang out with us as we go to Subsector. She's a great maker. Um, she's got several printers, uh, both FDM printers and resin printers. And uh, she does a lot of great prints. I think she's starting to take them to trade shows now. But she'll do prints. She'll paint prints. Um, just really, really cool. So let's go ahead and we will run over to Subsector um, tonight. Like I said, please join me as we go over there. And let's just get that started. Really, it's it flagged for Babe Ross too. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to work on getting that moderation fixed. But I'm going to go ahead and get the raid started. Please go over with Subsector. Please, or please go over with me to Subsector. You know, let's, let's hype it up when we get in there and show her some love. Thank you all for being out here with me this evening and sharing your, your evening with me. We will be streaming again Saturday morning. Um, at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, so 10 a.m. Eastern Time, we will continue the build.